Hello everyone and welcome back. So this time we're going to actually learn how to access the members of that list we created last time. So last time we realized that we can make a list by putting square brackets around a bunch of items. We separate those items with commas. Now if you're wondering, can I put strings and numbers in there at the same time? I won't tell you. Find out for yourself. Do a little bit of research. So we're going to access that list now. Now if you remember, last time we said, okay, we had a random string um, you know, we'll say never going to give you up. Um, and we wanted to capture a part of that string. Well, we put these square brackets and hopefully you're starting to see something here. Square brackets and two numbers. The first number where you start, the last number where you're going to end. Um, and so since it's zero to five, it means that I'm going to have five characters because you don't include the fifth character. Remember, Python counts from zero. So this would give uh, me Never. So never going to give you up. Okay. Now what this is hopefully helping you to start thinking about is square brackets. Square brackets over lists. I'm using square brackets with a string. Ah, a string is really just a list of characters. So it's a list of characters. It's just a very specialized list. And so our list can have a bunch of strings in it. It can have a bunch of numbers in it. And we access it the exact same way. Whatever the name of our variable is, we put some square brackets next to it, and then we can either type in the number of the item. Remember, Python counts from zero, so zero is the first, one is the second, um, and I won't even try to use my fingers because it gets too weird, um, and two will be the third. You'll have to practice with that a little bit to get that in your head. It's going to be a mistake that probably few of you make. And if we want to capture a sublist, so part of that list, then we would use these numbers. So. Right here, we're going to start with two and go to four. It won't include the fourth item. It will just include two and three. So I run this. So it'll be let in you. And if I use these right here, the second entry um, and random list one, that would not be this first one. It would be the second one because this is zero. This is one. And so it should print out Ghana and then two, three, print out you. Now this is a little bit different because I'm counting base zero. The first element is the zeroth element. Now it's something you have to remember because otherwise you're gonna mess up your code some. You'll know it as long as you're careful. Like I put all these print statements in, not because I necessarily want to see all of this. I do, I want to show it to you, but because I want to catch my errors, which I made plenty of. <laughs> so. Print statements are there to help you realize, wait a second, that should have five elements. It only has one, two, three, four. What I do wrong? That's what's going to happen to you. You're going to be like, oh, wait, I remember base zero. Think of them there. So let's try it. Let's keep moving on. Let's keep moving along. I had so much fun making those puns. I won't lie to you. Okay, so we're creating a variable called word. We're going to store the second entry from the list called tune there. Put the new variable word out to the terminal. Okay, now we're going to run around and desert you. Okay, so the second entry would be gonna. So word equals, and I'm not asking you to type gonna. No, I want you to grab it out of that list. So tune. And since it's the second one, okay, two print word and hopefully some of you realize that I made a mistake there on purpose. Two would be the third element, not the second, because it's base zero. Zero, one, two. So I need number one. When I'm accessing a list, I use square brackets. I just put a single number in, it grabs that one number out. Um, if I Put two numbers in, separated by a column, it will grab out a section of numbers. If I do something like this, let's see what happens. It might get angry at me. It comes out with an empty list. Now, if you're wondering, why did it come up with an empty list? Well, if we look at this, it starts at one and it ends just before one. Remember, the second number is always the one it ends just before. And so you said, I want to get the thing that starts at one and ends just before one. None of the items are that because you can't be. You can't start and end before you started. So if I run this again with a two there, it grabs out gonna. And if I just 
type in a one. That's what it looks like. It just gives me the word. So if you want it to be still in a list form, which is really weird, you can do the selection. I would never really do that for a single item from a list. It just gets really weird. Okay. Now what about non-consecutive members in a list? We can do those slices. That's pretty nice. Could I get like the third and the fifth and the eighth and the tenth element all at once? Let's find out. So, okay, we have this a long list right here. Zero, one, two, three, all the way up to ten. And I want to grab out um, the first, second, fifth, and ninth elements. Base zero, so that'll be one, two, five, and nine. So I just stuck them, you know, in square brackets, separated by commas. Seems good so far, and that makes sense to me. I run it. Ah. List indices must be integers or slices, not tuple. Well, let's, let's try something different. Let's put this in square brackets inside of here and see if that works. Okay, maybe if it's a list inside of that, it'll work. Ah. So the correct answer is no. No, Python doesn't have an easy way of grabbing out um, non-consecutive members. Um, it can do it if you're trying to do something that's regularly spaced. Like I want every other member, it's good with that. Um, it can do every third member, but it can't do the first, the second, and then the fourth, and then the eighth, um, just like this. Now there's very easy ways to code that. Um, I would just use, use something called a for loop. Works really easily. But for now, you haven't gotten there yet, we'll get there eventually. So remember, if you want those non-consecutive members, we're going to have to learn some new stuff to do this. Okay, I'm going to stop it there because we're going into a new section next time where we learn how to add things to a list after we've created it. So I hope this helped you, and I'll see all of you next time. Bye-bye.